Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to be uh, looking at another class of filter which is uh, kernel uh, convolutions. So with the uh, lookup tables uh, we've been looking at point-based uh, filters, so filters which only take into account the value of a single pixel to determine its output. Uh, with kernel convolutions we arrive at a class of pixels uh, which are based on uh, neighborhoods so where the, the, the value of a uh, pixel after the filter depends not only on the value of the input pixel but also of the uh, surrounding uh, pixels. Um, so if we go to the, to the, to the notebook, I've loaded here the working JPEG image. Um, what is the, uh, the convolution uh, operation? So we are going to be building it uh, step by step. Um, the first thing with the convolution is that we have uh, what's called a uh, kernel. So the idea is that the operation is between an image and a kernel, and the kernel will typically be a very uh, small uh, image. So in this case, I've taken a three by three uh, kernel that I've created, and which is just uh, an array here with uh, one column with ones, one column with zeros, and one column with uh, minus ones. So Let's uh, take one arbitrary position in the image. In this case, I take y99 x249. This brings me somewhere at the edge of the, uh, of the window. Um, the first thing that we will need to, 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 to do is to take uh, the, the neighborhood of that pixel. And we want to take a neighborhood that will have the same size as the, uh, as the kernel. So in this case, we want a three by three uh, neighborhood where the center pixel uh, is the uh, pixel at the position that we have uh, chosen. Um, so how can I do that? I can quickly do uh, define my region as uh, in the image. I know that they will be centered on uh, y x and I will start from y minus half of the size of my neighborhood and going to y plus the size, uh, half the size of my neighborhood uh, plus one since the uh, boundaries here are uh, exclusive for the uh, for the end of the of the um, slice um, and the same in the uh, x dimension and I can print that region oops sorry I forgot the plus one and I see that I have also here a 3 by 3 region which is centered on this uh, 99 to 49 uh, pixel and so that it has the same size as the kernel. So the convolution operation now will consist in multiplying element wise uh, each element of the kernel by the corresponding elements in the uh, neighborhood. So here 1 times 30, 0 times 189, minus 1 times 184, etc. And then we will sum the results of all those uh, multiplications. So if I do that uh, with a simple uh, loop, I will have for i in range the size of my kernel, the same in the other dimen dimension, and I will. Uh, add to the output value the multiplication of the pixel, the value in the region and the value in the kernel. And I will get an output, in this case, minus uh, 468, which, which is the result of the convolution and which I will use as the uh, new value of the pixel at the position that I determined. So now what uh, can I do? Well, I can generalize this uh, for every pixel. So I can, um, now instead of just computing one output value, I will compute an output image. And I will initialize it with uh, zeros uh, everywhere. And I will first simply uh, doing with, uh, with loops just to see uh, exactly what's happening. Uh, and I will start by going in the, uh, on the y-axis. Now, within this loop, I can get my region. And 
and then I can compute the output value, uh, which will not be just one single value, but which will be um, the, the new value of the pixel at position uh, y x. And so if I try to, to, to run um, this code, um, this code now I will have uh, an, an, an out of bound uh, issue. And um, let me just check that it's uh, the one I expected. Um, So let's uh, see uh, what, what happened when you have another one like that. I can try to find what, what happens uh, by just printing the position time in. And I starting here at, uh, at uh, zero, um, 0, and I see that I have uh, the very first step, I'm, I'm having um, a, a problem. And the problem is that if I try to look at the region that I have here, I, I'm having an empty region, and the reason for that is that uh, when I'm close to the edge of the image here, uh, the region that I'm trying to, uh, that I'm attempting to uh, to, to, to take, uh, will uh, actually um, be partly outside of the of the image, and so um, this does not work, and so I'm trying here to to uh, multiply values that, that don't exist. And this is a very common problem with, uh, with neighborhood operations in general in image processing, uh, is that we, we always have a problem when we are close to the border of the, of, of the image. And uh, this is fairly uh, expected, uh, because if we are talking about neighborhood, of course, this neighborhood is only uh, defined um, in places where the, the neighborhood uh, only includes pixels which are part of the image, but we still have to, to decide what to do with those uh, with those outside uh, pixels. So, one very valid uh, thing that we can do and that is a relatively common way of dealing with the problem is just to uh, completely ignore it and to decide uh, I will only look at the pixels for which the operation that I'm currently doing is valid. And so instead of starting from zero to uh, the shape of the image, I will start from uh, the size of the, uh, of the, of the neighborhood um, divided by two. So I will start, uh, I, I will only start with, with the first pixel that uh, wh where, the, where the neighborhood will be fully included in the uh, in the image, and same at the uh, um, for the for the end. I can do the same in the other axis. And now I will have a code that should be uh, running for every pixel, and it's just that all of the pixels close to the border will remain at uh, zero. Um, so let's have a look at the result. I will just do the uh, color map to have to be in, in uh, put the color map in grayscale as well. Um, and so here I'm having a, a, a result where you can see uh, lots of pixels which are around zero. So the, the, the gray here is very close to zero. And then I have uh, some uh, fairly high negative and positive values uh, here. I can actually see it a bit better if I take the absolute value here instead of uh, just the regular value. And what I will see is that the, the kernel that I've used, so this uh, particular uh, kernel, will act as a detector for uh, vertical um, vertical borders in the image. So wherever I have a vertical border, I will tend to, to have a value which is very different uh, on the left side of the neighborhood than on the right side. And so when I do the difference between those, uh, those pixels, I will tend to have a very high value uh, at least in uh, terms of absolute value, so very high or very low value. Whereas anywhere I, I don't have a, a, a vertical border, I will tend to have, on average, um, similar values on the left side and on the right side of the neighborhood, and so the, the sum will be uh, close to zero. I can um, 
switch uh, so we, I can take the transpose of this uh, of this kernel to get the uh, horizontal borders um, I can see already that here I will have a very different uh, value just for the uh, for the single pixels which was close to a vertical border now it's relatively close to zero I can run again this code so I can see that it, it takes this, this uh, uh, um, implementation with loops is very uh, slow and uh, it should not be done in general but th this is just to illustrate how, how it works um, and here with this uh, with this different kernel I can see that I have all the uh, horizontal borders which which are highlighted uh, and the vertical borders are, are, are uh, have disappeared so this is a very simple uh, border detectors that uh, only find borders in, in one uh, direction um, but it kind of gives an idea of the, the, the principle and of what we can do uh, with kernels. So really, with the exact same uh, mathematical operation, just by, vari by varying the kernel, uh, we can do uh, lots of, uh, of different uh, things. Uh, we can uh, filter and process the image to, 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 to transform it, and we can do uh, detectors for certain types of patterns that, that, we, uh, that we want to, to, to highlight. Um, so if you want to make this code uh, slightly uh, less um, slow um, we can replace uh, basically this entire bit um, this entire inner loop here uh, by using some smart um, numpy uh, processing uh, because since we are doing here an element wise operation um, we can just do the operation directly on uh, the uh, on the full array so we can take this uh, region multiply it by the kernel this will do the operation uh, element by element and then take the sum and put that directly into my output and I can see that already it's it runs uh, much uh, much faster and I should have exactly the same result. Yes, so I still I have this the same uh, the same exact same result, but no a uh, lot a uh, lot uh, uh, more uh, fast, not faster. Sorry. Um, finally, um, we can also use the built-in uh, method from uh, from SciPy. So there is a, uh, in SciPy uh, a convolve 2D um, method that does this operation uh, even uh, faster. And just quickly looking at that um, at that method, we can see that we also have here um, some uh, uh, parameters that we can use to decide what to do with the borders. So here we have decided to uh, ignore the borders. We can see that, that there are different options. Um, so uh, we can uh, th so the one where we ignore the the, the borders is the um, uh, valid uh, mode. So we we are, we are only using the uh, the pixels where the operations is is, is valid but we can also um, use options which will uh, um, give us uh, which will use the 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 the, 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 the pixel uh, at the borders and there we can decide uh, how we want to to, to use them uh, so some uh, of the possibilities are we can um, do what's called padding and with padding the idea is that we uh, artificially extend the image outside of the boundaries and we say that uh, outside of, the, of the, those boundaries the image is filled with a uh, constant value for instance zero and so it's as if the image was surrounded by zeros uh, we can also decide to uh, wrap around the value so it's this is considering basically that the image uh, instead of just being flat is on a sphere and so when we get to the negative values we just wrap around to the uh, other side um, we can also do a symmetrical boundary so where we just mirror uh, the values uh, on the edge um, so those are, are different options and which one is better will uh, will really depend uh, on the uh, application so if we want to use that the code becomes much simpler we are just using convolve 2d and the inputs will be the uh, the image and the kernel and then we can specify the uh, the, the mode so for instance if i use uh, mode equal valid i can show that i have here the the same uh, 
the same results. And just to get a look at the uh, shape, um, now I can see that the, the shape, instead of being, uh, so here the shape was the same than the uh, original image, but with uh, zeros uh, on, the, uh, on the border pixels. Uh, here, uh, the output I have is actually smaller than the input because I've only kept the, uh, the, uh, the pixels where the operation was uh, valid. Um, so I can do, if I do the mode same, then I will have the, uh, the, the same size of the outputs. And there I can play with, the, uh, with what to do with the boundary uh, pixels. Um, so that's it for the for the convolution uh, in general, and uh, in the next video we'll uh, see some applications of these kinds of filters with the uh, mean uh, filter. Um, and so that's it for now, and I will see you in the next video.